So good evening, friends. We'll start with today's session. We are discussing regarding the Stuart Close philosophy and the chapter number eight, that is the general pathology of homeopathy. And while discussing this chapter, Stuart Close has tried to correlate homeopathy in relation with the modern pathology. What are the concepts of homeopathy, homeopathic pathology that he tried to explain over there? At the same time, he tried to explain the how modern science have accepted all the concepts of Hahnemann, but it took it took 50 to 60 years for modern science to accept the concepts of Hahnemann. Whatever Hahnemann told regarding the knowledge of or causes of diseases, bacterial, bacterial causes of the diseases was accepted by the modern science in 1882 when Robert Cox first explained the um, cause of the cholera as a vibrio cholerae in the form of coma bacillus. Same thing happened related with the doctrine of latency, the concept of doctrine of metastasis, then the correlation of the um, sora and tuberculosis. All those things he tried to explain and he tried to explain that modern science was very late in accepting the concepts what Hahnemann have told regarding those pathologies. Only the difference is that whatever the pathology we used to consider is the dynamic pathology. The cause behind the main pathology, cause behind the material pathology. Whatever the material pathology is there is nothing but the end result. It is not the thing which is the cause of the disease, it is the end stage of the disease. This is an ultimate. The causes are always hidden in the some forms, some dynamic noxious agents which are running from years together, from generations together and which are invisible to the naked eye, but which persists inside the human being. Out of them, one is non-venereal and other two are venereal in origin. One is Sora, other two are syphilis and psychosis, and these three are the basic important pathologies of chronic diseases. And if you, feel, if you are able to judge them, then it is quite easy to treat the chronic diseases with the help of homeopathy. And for that purpose, he tried to explain all those things. Last part which we are discussing regard, is regarding the toxicology or theory of toxicology and homeopathy. Hahnemann also have explained the concept of this toxicology. He explained that there, the, it depends upon the diseases with which the patient approaches. If the patient approaches with the material poison, our line of treatment should be a material antidote. We should able to, we should be um, give him a material antidote in order to tackle that and whatever is are the remaining effects of absorbed poison those should be tackled with the dynamic antidote. And for that purpose, Hahnemann have explained three important ways of antidoting the patient. First variety to which he labeled by the name of dynamical antidotes or a physiological antidote, and which is based upon law of similars and which is, which is given in the form of dynamics in the homeopathic remedy. Second variety he has explained is the chemical antidote it is for the specifically a material poison which is consumed for which that antidote which is used in physical form is chemical antidote. And third, mechanical antidoting is not just a word mechanical antidote. These are mechanical measures in order to remove the toxins from the body or poison from the body. So while doing that, first gastric lavage, that is very important uh, thing which one must do. Second important that diluting the poison by administrating the mm, IV fluids, then sometimes using the diuretics to throw away the toxins. All those methods which they used to follow are the comes under the sphere of mechanical antidote. And all three are used depending upon what type of case with which you are approaching. And accordingly, we have to select which method one has to follow. So up to this level we have discussed and let us go with the page number 109, the paragraph number 2. The, a true therapeutic therefore stands as a connecting link between the pathology and pharmacology. Without an adequate therapy, pathology and pharmacology have only an academic interest for the students and savants who love to dig curiously into the things of nature. Savants means one manus, those people who used to 
remain in um, jungle who used to find it out the cause of the things is the savants. With an adequate and efficient therapeutics, they become powerful agencies for benefiting humanity. With a false therapeutics, they become a curse to the world through the countless evils of drug addiction, prolonged, perverted, and suppressed diseases, ruined lives, crippled and mutilated bodies, and blasted minds. So what he is explaining? He is explaining that what is therapeutics? Therapeutics is nothing but the connecting link. Connecting link between one, one side the pathology, another side it is nothing but the um, medicines. So this connecting link is very important to which we label by the name of therapeutics. And these therapeutics, again there are two varieties. First variety is the true therapeutics, which is based upon some laws, some specific laws like law of similars, where the symptoms of the patients are matched with the symptoms of the disease, uh, symptoms of the remedy, and you give that remedy in the dynamic form is true therapeutic. There is a false therapeutic, which, is, which was followed during Hanumanian time for a longer time of duration. There were methods of removing the material cause of the disease without knowing what that material is. So there were methods of inducing the vomiting, there were methods you, you know, giving the diuretics, there were methods giving the purgatives, there were methods the, to take the cuts on the body, to remove the blood, blood sucking, all those methods which are hazardous and haphazard methods and to which he labeled, this is called as a false therapeutics. So this, it depends what you are using, whether you are following the right therapeutics or whether you are following the false therapeutic. So with the false therapeutics, they become a curse to the world with, through a countless evils of drug addiction, prolonged, perverted and suppressed diseases, ruined lives, crippled and mutilated bodies and blasted minds. The shores of time are strewn with painful wrecks victims of false therapeutic systems and methods, science falsely so-called. And Hanuman here criticized that false method of therapeutic, which was followed for longer time of duration during his time. Even today, such methods are followed. I have seen many cases, those who used to go to the uh, villages, to the bhaktas, and they do whatever they want. I have seen that patient was having rheumatoid arthritis, a joint was swollen and around that joint, whole around the knee, there was the burns spots were there. So I asked, what, what, what is this? They explained that they went to the bhakta and what he has done, he has taken the iron rod, burnt, made it very, very hot and he has put that over there. These are the haphazard methods which causes a damage to the patient's self. And such types of methods to which Hanuman call by the false methods of treatment or false therapeutics. So what you are using is very important, whether you are scientific or unscientific. And then he turns, what is science? Science is directed upon foundation of facts, principles and laws. See, this is, this is what. What are facts? The things which happens in front of your open eyes, naked eye. Facts are realities which are based upon principles, which are based upon laws. Science is related, systematized knowledge. So it is systematic. When you are taking the case, you deal with the patient, you ask all details, patient narrates everything, you write down it in a proper form, whole case taking was finished, then you come to the conclusion of diagnosis, then you come to the conclusion of totality of symptoms, then you analyze the totality, then you evaluate the totality, then you form the repertorial totality on one side and potential differential field on another side, then you repertorize. After repertorizing, you get the result of repertorization, a group of four or five remedies, then you it, compare it with the PDF or potential differential field or through the Metramedica and then come to the right remedy. This is the systematized method. Hanuman have made it so systematized that it becomes very simple to reach to the remedy if you follow those steps. These steps are necessary. You must go through this channel. This channel develops your logic. This channel makes you very perfect. Science is like that. Homeopathic 
method of medicine or applied medicine is totally based upon these laws. It is not a haphazard prescription. It is not just I feel. It is not the homeopathy. Why do you feel there is a method, there is a scientific analysis behind it? And then you reach to the right remedy as well as right potency, as well as right repetition. All those things depends upon on the basis of the way you proceed, the way you approach. And this is what he wants to explain. Science is related, systematized knowledge. A system to be scientific must be capable of including, explaining and using all the facts upon which it is based. So, if you want to develop any specific law, if you want to go with scientific method, you have to look towards the facts. Hanuman looked towards the fact, that's why he, he, he was able to discover the homeopathy. The fact was that he was translating Kalan's Mater America. On one page, it was written that Sinkona bark is the remedy for uh, malaria. On another page, it was written that Sinkona bark, if given to the healthy human being, produces malaria. See, the fact was re written over there. Then Hanuman considered what is the fact? whether first sentence is fact or second sentence is fact. And he tried to make it scientifically proved and he proved both the sentences and then he immediately, it struck to his mind. If it, both the sentences are truth, if both, both the sen sentences are the facts, then there must be correlation. And because of which he was able to come to the law that is law of similars. So this is how a science develops. A system to be scientific must be capable of including, explaining and using all facts upon which it is based. Its fundamental law or principle must include and be harmonious with its all its subordinate and related laws and principles. So if you are taking into consideration any law from homeopathy, it should correspond to the all basic laws of nature. If they go hand in hand, then your laws are natural laws. If it is not at all Relating with the nature's laws, it means either there is fault in your law. Its technique and practical methods must be based directly upon and conforms to the principles which it seeks to apply. So if you consider law of simple, similar, simple law, what is the law of similars? A drug capable of producing in a healthy individual, a disease state, exactly similar to that happens in a disease individual acts as a curative agent if the disease is in a curable state. That's the law. You apply this to n number of patients and you're going to verify it every time. This is what is exact technique of using it and verifying your law. Ethics, it hardly needs to be said, requires that its representative shall consistently practice what he preaches. Ethics, ethics means what is ethics? What are ethics? Ethics means it is the personal conscience behind following the certain things. Ethics to follow the law of similar, that's all. If you are following law of similar, then you should be ethical enough to approach it with each and every case with this law only. Then you should not do for every patient according to the patient, for this patient, I give the homeopathy, for this patient, I will give the homeopathy, for another patient, I will give the isopathy. It's not like that. You should be ethical enough. If you are practicing homeopathy, you practice the homeopathy. And then, if you are ethical enough, then you think about what you want to practice and go for it. If you choose homeopathy, just go for it. It depends upon how much ethical you are. A true science of pathology must include and be able to explain all the symptoms of the disease, the finer subjective individual symptoms as well as general functional, organic and objective symptoms that occur in the disease. This sentence is, has a lot of meaning. What happens in the modern pathology, they used to take into consideration only the visible changes in the organs or tissues. They never considers what the patient feels. What are the patient's symptoms? They are always there only with the visible pathology. So they label, yes, this is liver cirrhosis. 
this is fatty liver this is fatty degeneration of the heart this is called as a uh, hypertrophy of the heart these are all the pathological words which they used to use and they are based upon the macro pathology that is visible pathology but patient comes to to the physician not with the pathology only visible pathology he has many subjective feelings he explains it in his own words he tries to put it with his own individuality for example if he says doctor i am having very much teaching pain in my left side of the chest and i feel better when i lie on opposite side but whenever i try to lie on left side it used to get aggravated and it it teaches me a lot whenever i sleep lying down it aggravates it aggravates at 2 am to 3 am now you he is explaining you the symptomatology which is subjective symptomatology which is not visible to your naked eye if it is not visible to your naked eye don't you feel that it has a significance it has because home the true pathology should include all those things this is what close says he says the importance of subjective as well as objective symptoms objective if it is there well and good but objective will not differentiate one patient from another patient for every patient hypertrophy of every um, patient whose uh, heart is hypertrophied remedy is not changed it never depends upon the hypertrophy what the patient is having if this patient is having such types of symptoms you are, you can come to the right remedy that is it is kali carbonicum because modalities are there stitching pain is there left sided chest pain is there aggravated by lying on same side ameliorated by lying on opposite side aggravated at 2 3 am it is simple kali ka all those subjective symptoms gives you directly a remedy but objective never and that's why true pathology must consider subjective or and objective symptomatology along with whatever the visible pathology is there this is what close wants to say but general modern pathology never consider the subjective feelings never consider the modality never consider the sensation which actually are individualizing the patient a true science of therapeutics must correspond and connect at every point with its correlated science of pathology and be capable of adaptation and application to the needs of the individual cases of the disease so the way true pathology is there there should be a true therapeutics if you want to prescribe for the patient what you have to look for you have to look for symptomatology that is totality of the symptom you must know whether that remedy has that much of capacity to reach to that specific area we'll take simple example if patient comes to you a patient who who always wants to be pampered she always wants that she should be appreciated a little bit egoistic patient she comes to you with a polycystic ovarian disease and she approaches and she is having polycystic ovarian disease along with little bit cervicitis with leucorrhea and she she if you praise her she is always happy if someone never play praise her she never likes it and she gets disturbed and she is having already diagnosed with the sonography that she is having polycystic ovarian disease now you have the case a patient whose pathology visible pathology lies in her ovaries but which cannot differentiate remedy you cannot reach to the right remedy on the basis of that but there are, there are features that she likes to be appreciated if she is not appreciated she gets depressed then she feels dull irritable she is quite egoistic and all those features are there now you find it out a right remedy which is the remedy anyone no one 
Now al already I have told you all those things. Now I will tell you, rubric, delusion appreciated she is not. No, it is not platina, it is palladium. It is palladium. Now open your Borix Matra Medica. See first line. What is given over there in Borix Matra Medica? It is an ovarian remedy. See, written on the first line of the remedy, it is an ovarian remedy. So this is what one has to understand. It should correlate whole thing. It should not correlate only with subjective, it should not correlate only with objective. You have to correlate whole thing, that is what is called as a totality. If you are able to find it out that, then your remedy is a true therapeutics for that case. And this is what he wants to explain over there. The identity of the individual must not be lost in the class. A scientific therapeutic system must be broad enough to cover the needs of the individual as well as the class. It will not do not do to reject one class of basic phenomena, subjective, for example, and attempt to formulate a system upon the remainder. So he is explaining while re explaining about the therapeutics that if you are coming to a right conclusion, for example, if you are giving a remedy from the um, plant kingdom, you know there are Mm. If you know the Rus family, and there are many species, Rus tox is there, Rus aromatica is there, then Rus venata is there. So there are many, many more. One is big group Rus. The species level they are differentiated. Your each and every symptom of the remedy should denote that specific species and then you can get a right remedy. If patient comes to you during a damp rainy weather with a typical fever blisters around the mouth, they are burning, itching, there is erysipelatus inflammation along with red tip tongue and patient is disturbed because of it, because of itching and patient comes to you. Now, depending upon whole symptomatology, the visible fever blister along with the patient's future that there is a burning, there is itching, there is irritation, aggravated during damp rainy weather, you get remedy, rust off. You reach to a perfect remedy because of subjective as well as objective symptoms together. Then you can reach to the right remedy. Without that, you can't. So this is what he is explaining over there regarding the um, true therapeutic. True therapeutics is always based upon this specific symptom. So here you have to take into consideration the subjective as well as objective phenomena. And that is what is called as a true therapeutic. So I think we'll stop over here because next paragraph we have to discuss in length. That is exactly what therapeutics is there and what is art of healing or applied therapy that is those both things are uh, short notes in your exams and we have to take into consideration all those details so we'll stop over here we have learned certain aspects of again the therapeutics and general pathology and what is true pathology and what is true therapy this what Hanuman wants to explain, this he has tried to explain in this chapter. So that's all for today. Today evening, we're going to learn one more remedy. I think it is the last remedy from the second year syllabus. That is the Kali Sulfuricum, again from the biochemic system of medicine. So at 8 o'clock, be there with the Kali Sulfuricum. So thanks a lot and we'll meet together at the same time at night. Thank you.